Good morning, my name is Mark Patterson and I'm the curator of Crookshank Botanic Garden. Indeed, we're in part of the Botanic Garden today with a range of sounds around us. You'll hear the birds in a moment. You'll also hear a lot of younger voices. So this is a botanic garden that is primarily for research, teaching, but also public engagement. And that involves school groups of all ages learning about the flora and indeed the seasons that are so obvious within a botanic garden. And particularly in this context, the most northern university botanic garden here in Aberdeen. I'm also here, and I'll introduce my colleague, Dr. Tyler Stevenson, in a moment, with one of our leading scientists who specializes in looking at the biological rhythms that are paramount for life on Earth. In my context, of course, as somebody who's a trained gardener and is managing a botanic garden collection, we're here on the 20th of December, a day before winter solstice, a day before we have our shortest day, our longest evening, two days away from the days beginning to get longer once again. And flora is an indicative uh, type of, of biology on this planet, showing how light levels are such a important factor for growth. Looking around the Botanic Garden today, we do have a few snowdrops already showing first bloom. But we know, generally speaking, the growing season won't be for another 12 weeks. So, as we make our way through just a smidge of the garden here, I'll be able to introduce you to Tyler Stevenson, and he will be able to explain his work with much more care and attention than I can. But suffice to say that his work is looking at Tyler, your work is looking at how different environmental factors promote, change, alter how life evolves in its life cycle, but particularly its breeding cycle. Exactly. And when we look in the environment, there are a number of different cues that we could use to time our physiology and behavior. And when we look across organisms, from plants to animals to humans, the most reliable, consistent, predictive environmental cue is the annual change in day length. So right now we're going to be having the winter solstice up in Aberdeen. We're going to have about six hours and 30 minutes of daylight. And this is rapidly going to change as we enter the spring period. And plants, animals, and humans use this rapid change in day length to coordinate a number of different physiological, behavioral, and cognitive processes. And this is important because you wouldn't want to use any environmental cue, such as temperature or rainfall, because these are cues that are going to be highly variable day to day. I know precisely when the sun's going to rise tomorrow, I know precisely when the sun is going to set tomorrow, and I know that we're going to add two to four minutes every single day. You don't have that same type of reliability when it comes to precipitation or temperature. So it's the annual change in day length that I find is one of the most important environmental cues that we need to study. I would also perhaps suggest that as a serious positive, knowing that biology has broadly across the planet evolved to match day length or indeed levels of darkness it is the one great factor that will not change with climate change occurring and knowing that that may have other negative impacts on how life evolves and continues to develop across this planet exactly so one of the biggest challenges for plant and animal species is to coordinate this mismatch that we have right now we have a reliable day length cue but an unreliable temperature cue so animals that are going to rely primarily on the temperature cue are going to have a phenomenal mismatch. And it's that day length cue that is going to be that anchor that all species are going to need to integrate or to detect in order to accommodate the changes that are going to come with climate change. We see that uh, in the garden here. I've mentioned we already have some snowdrops in flower. We might associate that with this time of the year, but generally after Christmas, not before. And I think it's less light levels to do with light levels on this occasion. It's because we are getting warmer soil temperature lasting longer. So that is that a variant within. Exactly. So they need to be able to integrate all environmental cues, but it's day length that is the primary predictive cue, and all other cues are supplementary cues. Fascinating. Thank you.